Acton? Oh, COVID shot. She was sent to Italy. Yes, she was sent to Italy to um, to become a singer like her aunt was. Aunt Alice. Aunt Alice. Aunt Alice. Um, and um, while she was growing up there for 10 years, uh, the person that was the pianist was um, Charles Boyer Gregory. And they fall in love, and he takes her back to London and convinces her to live in the old house where she grew Aunt up. Aunt Alice's first. house. Right. Which was really tough for her, but she thought with the help of Gregory that she could do that. Um, and lo and behold, through the years, uh, uh, you know, it was actually a short period of time. There yeah, that, that, um, he began gaslighting her and um, convincing her that she was becoming forgetful and going crazy, and he basically made her housebound. And every night he'd leave. Socially isolated. Socially isolated her and convinced her that she was going crazy. Um, and so he would leave every night to do his quote unquote work at his office. And he hired um, a housemate named um, Nancy. And Nancy was Angela Lansbury. And so young. Angela Lansbury. So nasty. Angela Lansbury had um, many police people that were her friends, quote unquote. Um, but she was also um, nasty, well, she thinks. I mean, you get the impression she was nasty to Paula, but you're not really sure. It, it's almost as if Gregory kind of convinces Nancy that Paula's crazy to convince Paula that Paula's crazy. Um, so every night he leaves and it turns out that he's actually not going to his office, he's going into the attic and he's turning the gas light down and making noises and freaking her out um, every night. Um, and the, and um, there's a police person who was very, very entranced with Alice, the singer, his, her aunt, when she was alive. It's like one of the first cook case files you see on the movies. Yeah, and he becomes curious about what's going on in that house. And um, as soon, you know, towards the end of the film, he figures out what's happening, that the thief was probably, or the murderer was probably Gregory, because uh, Gregory's much older than Paula. Um, and so the, um, Gregory was, in fact, going up into the attic where all of Alice's stuff was, looking for some jewels that Alice had. And so she was probably murdered because of those jewels by Gregory. Um, and he finally finds those jewels on one of Alice's costume dresses. And lo and behold, at the perfect time, um, the detective... Uh, Cameron? Yeah, something like something that. Like that. Um, um, figures it all out and goes to Paula, you know, like forces his way in because she was afraid to have anybody in the house. And um, and um, tells her the story of what's happening, and she's and she finally gets her wits about her, I guess, realizes that this is happening, and it's all making sense now. Um, and they catch him in the act. And there's this classic, classic scene at the end when uh, Ingrid Bergman finally realizes that no, she's not crazy. Uh, Cameron has him tied up 
in upstairs the in the attic, and he's sitting there all bowed, and he's trying to convince Ingrid Bergman um, that, you know, they can run away together, there's still time, that he absolutely loves her, and she, like, pulls out this long, long, sharp knife and says, well, maybe this knife is a figment of my imagination, perhaps it's not real, what should I do with it, and we're all sitting there waiting for her to just, you know, hack, um, you know, Sergi, or Gregory, um, Sergi's his real name, the death with the knife, but in the end she lays the knife down and they, they hustle him away. And, and his real name is Charles Boyer. Well, yeah, Charles Boyer, but he, <laughs> Gregory's the name we have for him throughout the movie, except he's really certain. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. Right. And um, there were reviewers that were disappointed because instead of making him the murderer that he was, they just made him into a thief. And the psychopath that he was, making her a psychopath, and made him just mm -hmm. into a thief. But he, um, you know, this movie was a psychological thriller. It was the, the first time that they showed, a, you know, a situation where somebody was lying to somebody so much that the, the person lied to actually started believing what, what was being said. And then it went into, kind of moved into Stockholm Syndrome, where she became all in, incredibly dependent on this person that was convincing her that she was crazy. Um, so it was very freaky. The lighting was really great. Lots yeah. of shadows. Yeah. The Angela Lansbury, it was her film debut. She was 18. You know, she was 18 years old. So it was, wasn't a big part, but it was funny because I read in one of the, you know, dialogues about this that she was, you know, working in a very menial job prior to this, making, you know, what, $18 a week or whatever it was. And the person didn't want her, the, her boss didn't want her to leave, so he said, I'll match it. And, of course, in the movies, she was getting paid a lot more. It was like $500 a week. Um, so, of course, he couldn't do that, and he let her go, and that was her film debut. Um, so that was kind of neat. She was much nicer in Bed Knobs and Broomsticks and Murder, She Wrote. Yeah, she's... Not that I ever saw Murder, She Wrote. She was but. a very good, kind of nasty housekeeper. Mm -hmm. She was very good at being nasty. Um, but she's also the one that got the detective, you know, Joseph Cotton, the actor, um, kind of in the house to find out the truth. Or, no, it was the other housemaid, the older one. Yeah, the nice housemaid. Yeah. Yeah, um, and then there was, you know, the, the nosy neighbor, an older woman, that helped in kind of getting her, getting him into the house, too, I think. Um, but it won Best Picture, right, did it? Nominated. Nominated. It won uh, Best Production and Best Actress. Right, Best Actress, like, rightfully so. Um, and um, Gregory, Charles Boyer, was very good at being icky. He oh, just, so ugh, he'd be he'd like so, icky. so nice, and then he would just suddenly erupt with ickiness and nastiness. Then he'd be really, really nice. It's, it's yeah, like the that. ultimate icky. Yeah, yeah the, the nice, guy. mean, nice, mean. He kind of reminded me of a demented uh, Desi Arnaz. Uh, ah, that's an interesting way to put it. Um, but you know, it was interesting because she would say, "I want to go out," and he would like convince her it was bad to go out, and then she would want to go out anyway. And he's like, "Well, let me come with you," and then he'd steal something from her purse or something to convince her that she, you know, or take a key that was an important key. And, mm -hmm. uh, or, yeah. I think there's one particular scene where there's a painting missing from the wall. Of course, he's taking the painting from the wall. Right. But convinces that actually, her that she had actually taken it and put it somewhere. Yeah. Um, and she, um, you know, this was very classic. It was very classic Hitchcock-y, even though it wasn't a Hitchcock film. I would have put good money as a Hitchcock film, actually. Yeah, yeah. So, um, very much enjoyed the film. Um, it, it gave me the creeps, especially with the black and white and the kind of, you know, the lights going up and down and the evil eyes and all of that. So. I've been wanting to see this actually for a long time because I remember being very, very tiny and little and, and my parents talking about gaslighting somebody mm -hmm. or my mom accusing my dad of gaslighting her. And so it became part of the, uh, you know, our, our lexicon. Yeah, because of this film. This mm -hmm. film actually coined the term gaslighting, or it, the, word, the term mm -hmm. gaslighting came as a result of this mm -hmm. film, you know. Um, so that is definitely the, the biggest fun fact, I would say. Mm -hmm. That and Angela Lansbury being, um, being her but, film debut. Yeah, as a so, but definitely a much watch, I would say. Absolutely. You agree? Mm -hmm. 
So that's all we have for today. The next film we've already seen, and it took me a long time to get through it, so I can't say I loved it. But we'll talk about it next time. <laughs> Till then. <laughs>